What's going on guys? So as you can see, I have the E90 in the garage and we are going to be doing some much needed maintenance for this car. I have a boatload of parts right here. Uh, obviously FCP Euro, gotta get that lifetime warranty. One day I'll be sponsored. Uh, one day, one day. But anyways, uh, yeah, I'm going to get started with uh, just taking apart all the like plastics covering the engine because anyways, uh, we're going to be doing the valve cover and valve cover gasket replacement. Um, we're doing an oil change, NGK spark plugs. I'm replacing all the vacuum lines. Uh, I got new boost solenoids. Basically, I am tackling the 30FF code at all the failure points because I'm really sick of it. So let's just get started with it. I'm going to put you guys on a time lapse. So as you guys can see, I have the NGK spark plugs right here. I have the all the vacuum lines that I need to replace. The valve cover is here. And the good thing about ordering this from FCP Euro is, like I said before, you get that lifetime warranty. And the valve cover is already attached to the valve cover gasket. Meaning like you don't have to do anything, you already know it's on there, all you gotta do is bolt it on there yourself. And besides that, these are the uh, boost solenoids that I got. Um, yeah. There you go, boost solenoids. And this, I had a hard time finding the part number for. This is basically, so as you can see right here, this vacuum canister mount is rusted. And it looks really ugly to me. I don't like it. I had to order a new one, but it took me forever to find that part number. So if anybody wants that, it's right here. Just pause the video if you want to and uh, note that down. But yeah, this is that, uh, I believe it's aluminum. I could be wrong, but yeah, as you can see, the new vacuum canister mount. And... Uh, I also got new vacuum canisters because that's also a failure point since they're plastic. But these ones are upgraded vacuum canisters, which are, I believe they're aluminum. I could be wrong, but they're made from Burger Motorsports and they look a lot nicer than these uh, old brittle plastic ones. So yeah, I'm really excited for this. Uh, I already replaced the valve cover once. so. I'm gonna have fun doing that again, but at least I'll have that experience under my belt. And hopefully this will be faster. So now I will put you guys on a time lapse. Okay, so basically I have removed the uh, fuel rail, the fuel lines, the coil packs. I am now going to be removing the vacuum canisters and the mount. And then after that, we will take off the, well, I think I have to uh, remove the uh, coil pack sensors first. And then I can remove the valve cover itself. One thing that I completely forgot that I did the last time was... I completely stripped this bolt. It's literally like spinning in place. So yeah, that's why you should always use new bolts for this replacement and torque it to spec because if you over torque it, you will break the bolt, which I did. So I have to now deal with that. And that's gonna be fun. I'll give any updates if I can or can do it. I'm just gonna blow through this again. Oh, also, the previous owner had this AFE intake. 
installed i have no idea when he or she installed it because uh this intake has definitely seen better days i don't know if i should get rid of this or try to sell it for some money or whatever value it's uh still has but i have a new plan for this so uh stay tuned you guys will see soon what i'm doing instead of putting this back on Okay, so vacuum canisters are out. I unplugged the O2 sensors. Uh, I unplugged this. I forgot what it is. I'll probably put it somewhere up here. Um, so I, the harness for the uh, coil packs, I ended up just removing the, uh, the tray for it because the last time I did it, having to like, move it out of the way was kind of annoying and just having the tray not here is a lot easier as you can see i could literally just lift it up and then take it off and it's not that hard to put back on so uh i bit the bullet i really didn't care i'm trying to make this whole process easier for me taking it out because putting it back in is way harder than taking it out last time i had to do a lot of finagling with putting the valve cover back in because of how how little space I had. Like it was very annoying, but yeah, I already got everything out of the way and now I'm going to be uh, removing the valve cover and putting on the new one. So uh, let's get to it. So as you guys can see, vacuum lines, boost solenoids, NGK spark plugs, the fuel rail, fuel lines, coil packs, and everything else I removed. You have to number these. Uh, all of them really. The coil packs are important. But the fuel lines are the most important. Because they are specific for each uh, cylinder of the car. So I forgot that the front of the engine. Basically the one closest to you is actually cylinder 1. I thought cylinder 1 was in the back. So I had to uh, reorder it. But yeah basically... This is the closest to you, that's why I labeled that front. And this is the farthest away, and I labeled that back. The only reason I remembered which one is front and back is because cylinder six is notorious for always having a misfire. And that's likely because it's cooler on the front of the engine than the rear, because that's where like all the heat is. But yeah, basically I'm about to get started with all of this. Uh, I'm probably gonna do this well, yeah, I'll probably do the vacuum lines first and then remove the valve cover because, like, I guess it's easier. I don't know. I will uh, let you guys know what I do first, but, yeah. It's, like, 4 a.m. right now, so I'm going to go to sleep. I don't know why I'm up right now, but, yeah, I will catch you guys tomorrow, which will be in, like, 10 seconds for you. Look, as you guys can see, there is a lot of oil buildup because of the valve cover leaking. The reason it's leaking again, even though I've already replaced it once, is because the valve cover itself is cracked. And last time I only replaced the valve cover gasket. I knew that going into it, but I had already taken it off and it's not really good to leave the valve cover off for a long time. So I just decided to uh, reinstall it with the replaced valve cover gasket and just let it run through till it starts leaking again. So uh, yeah. Okay, so I loosened all, oh, this, 
I honestly thought this was a gimmick. Like, it seems like one, but it's actually very helpful. Uh, yeah, my hands are dirty, but I will link where I got this in the description. And uh, yeah, this is actually really helpful because like in difficult spaces, your hands, like they're basically pointing at where you wanna like work on. And it's actually, it's not bad. I got this for like $15, so it's pretty cool. Anyways, I, uh, I loosened all the, I believe these are like called um, E-Star bolts or something like that, but I loosened all of them with an E10. And uh, as you can see, I said here, the first one is like stripped, right? So like, look, look at that. The bolt broke in half. So I have to kind of figure out now how to deal with this. I really hope I can lift this up and deal with it later instead of having to like do it while it's still on because this will be a lot more difficult than I imagined it would be. So let me uh, try and see what I can do with that bolt and uh, we'll move from there. As you guys can see, I got the valve cover off. The piece of trash is on the floor right there. This is also another reason why you should always wear PPE because I got a nasty little cut right there, removing the valve cover bolts. And uh, luckily, that uh, the bolt that broke in half did not give me any issues. I just have to now figure out how to get that out of the uh, actual head. So. I'm gonna figure that out real quick. Ooh, shout out to FCP Euro, they already installed the gasket. The new bolts are in there. The new valve cover is looking, looking pretty good. And then this is the piece of trash that I just took out earlier. So yeah, let's go get to installing this. So basically, I cleaned the mating surfaces as best I could, trying to get any residue that was left on it away. So far, it's looking pretty good. Uh, when you're doing this, make sure you use a lint-free rag microfiber towel so that nothing gets into the motor. And besides that, I, um, I vacuumed out all the, like, oil and carbon buildup as best I could. I'm going to try and uh, figure out if I can uh, like try to clean this down even more. Basically that's, it used to be a lot worse. I don't know if I showed a uh, clip beforehand, but it was a lot worse than this. So uh, I'm just grateful that I could do this much to it, but yeah, I'm just going to keep cleaning it a bit more before putting on the new valve cover and uh, yeah, we should be good to go. Okay, so for the most part, I uh, finished vacuuming the excess oil. I wiped down the mating surface for the valve cover. Also took out the spark plugs and cleaned the housings <clears throat> as best I could because there was a lot of oil in them and it was just like, especially cylinder six, it was completely drenched. But yeah, I'm just going to keep on trying to clean these as best as possible before putting in the new spark plugs. Uh, but yeah, after that, everything should just be self-explanatory, putting everything back together. 
Then we're gonna do the oil change and uh, the vacuum lines. Oh, also I didn't, I forgot to mention this, but I also got a upgraded PCV valve that we're going to install because it's like back there somewhere and we might as well just do it right now. So yeah, let me get to it. I'm like eh, almost halfway there, but yeah. Also to vacuum this, like I don't have one of those like miniature um, vacuum hoses. So what I did was I got my normal one. I got duct tape, put it into a straw and then this like clear tube thing. But yeah, it worked. And then when I needed like little extra suction, I put uh, I put this coffee stirrer at the end of it and then it worked. So yeah, innovation. Okay, so I have already finished whatever I said I would do previously. I just gapped the spark plugs. So for the uh, N54, it said that the NGK spark plugs are supposed to be gapped to 0.22 millimeters. I don't have one of those like precision gapping tools. I just had this thing from uh, my local AutoZone. I just bought it a few years ago, but yeah, I already gapped these off camera. It's really annoying to do, but yeah, I'm going to install these now and then we'll get to installing the new valve cover and then we should be good to go. Since I have a brand new valve cover, I thought it'd be easier just to, just to remove the PCV valve while it's off. So it's it would be normally towards the back of the engine, but I just flipped the cover around, loosened it. It has a 13 millimeter plastic uh, like cover. This is the uh, new PCV valve that came in the new valve cover. This is the upgraded one that I have, it's metal. And basically just put it back in there and put on the plastic cover and you should be good to go. So yeah, I'm gonna go do that real quick. Give me one second. spark plugs are in there the new boost solenoids are installed they were very annoying to install because there's two nuts one on the top and one on the bottom and you have to do the bottom one blindly but uh yeah i got the new solenoids in i'm about to put the new valve cover on and then after that i believe oh and then the oil change and uh yeah Okay, so those are the old bolts. Um, these are the old spark plugs. I mean, besides the fact that they were drenched in oil, they're not too bad. So I don't know, I might keep them, probably just throw them away, but yeah. Got the valve cover on. I'm going to start assembling the new vacuum lines, making sure everything goes where it needs to go. And then, yeah, we're gonna begin the uh, reassembly of everything and then do the oil change. So yeah. So far so good, we made some progress.
all right so as you guys can see the new vacuum canisters are on the new vacuum lines from the canisters to the vacuum pipe are on the uh i think this is the brake booster uh vacuum line that connects to i don't know what this is called but replace that vacuum line i replaced this vacuum line hold up this one going from the intake manifold to the blow-off valve i will need to get a one fourth pipe because as you guys can see that is not enough but i mean it's too tight is what i'm saying like um so yeah i need the i'm planning on getting a vader solutions uh like blow off valve adapter and i actually just found out the reason that i've been having a boost leak so my the previous owner of this car is an idiot and i will explain why so over here so the original so the stock uh intake for the n54s have a diverter valve on the plastic charge pipe and it goes um there's one one uh vacuum line that goes from the intake manifold and then it goes into this little t thing where it splits off into two parts that and they both go onto the diverter valve on the charge pipe which i don't have because the previous owner is all the tile blow off valve and this idiot didn't think of just running it straight to the blow off valve he just left it open like this genius but yeah that was i'm pretty i'm like 99.999 percent sure that is the reason for my boost leak but yeah i got all the vacuum lines replaced besides the one that goes to the turbo uh i might do that i might not but yeah the uh fuel lines and the fuel rails back on I have to, uh, I torque the, I torque the valve cover down to spec. I'm going to reconnect the O2 sensors. And uh, besides that, I just have to do the oil change and uh, yeah, we're good to go. It is currently like 5.30 a.m. right now. And I'm going to work in like an hour. So yeah, we made some progress. Uh, but yeah, I will catch you guys when I do the oil change. Oh, I forgot to mention, um, this is my old vacu vacuum pipe and the vacuum lines. As you can see, they are completely destroyed. Absolute trash. These are the old uh, vacuum lines that ran from the intake manifold into that T thing that I discovered. I was replacing it and then I realized it didn't make sense because I only had two connections for the vacuum line. And there was just a third thing that it, it it just didn't add up and then after i did some research i realized the oem what oem uh sorry not oem the uh stock intake has a diverter valve on the charge pipe which has two vacuum lines going to it and then it just clicked into my head that i didn't need that but anyways this is the old vacuum canisters and the old vacuum canister mount thank god i bought a new one because it looks like garbage and this one looks brand spanking new, especially with the Burger Motorsports uh, vacuum canisters. Oh, the only vacuum lines I haven't done are from the canisters to the boost solenoids, which I will show whenever I work on this again. It's probably going to be after work today. But uh, yeah, we made some good progress. Catch you guys in a bit. Okay guys, as you saw just now, 
I did the oil change and everything is good to go. We've done all the maintenance. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty stoked. Really hope this 30FF goes away and my boost gauge does not read negative 24. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. I'll put all that stuff back on camera. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you liked, uh, please share, uh, subscribe. Send it to your friends, anyone who has an N54 or an E90, E9X in general. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.